first of all, um, credit to Colorado. They were the better team. They played more connected. They played tougher. Uh, they played with more purpose. And they earned that. They were the better team on almost every front. So credit JR and her group that played with cohesiveness and fight. And they played like they were fighting for something. And credit to them. Secondly, um, this game is about something bigger than ourselves. So I would be remiss um, to not thank Coach Yao. I have this vision in my head. I was coaching at Florida State. She had just, Coach Yao had just gotten out of the hospital. And um, she was wearing gloves and she had a wig and she was just hanging on and she came and coached her team. And uh, I remember what she said to us after the game, that she just wanted coaches to come together and fight for something bigger than themselves. She was such an example of uh, incredible competitiveness, excellence. She was a gold medal coach. She went to the final four with her team, but she was about lives and hearts and making a difference. And uh, it is so humbling to be a part of what she wanted in, in the K Out Cancer Fund and to try to raise money for women's cancers. So as mad as I am and as frustrated as I am, thank you, Coach Yao. Um, then Tammy Blackburn battling metastatic breast cancer came and spoke to our team today and talked about her fight. And she always ends and says, this is really hard, but we can do hard things. I don't want anyone giving us any excuses. I don't care how many players we've had, how hard our journey, I don't care any of that. We can do hard things. If Tammy can do hard things, we can do hard things. If Jan Cloyd, one of our biggest donors, can do hard things, we can do hard things. And uh, as and I'll, uh, of course, you know, I'm a basketball coach. I'm a competitor. Um, but I also love people. And uh, this pink game was a reminder that we are really lucky. I'm even lucky to be mad right now coaching my team. I get to do this. And, uh, and as much as, um, you know, I'm a competitor, I, uh, I want to acknowledge that this is a really important cause. And we need to keep fighting for better treatments and women, uh, better and cures, and so that maybe other people don't have to fight the same way Jan Cloyd and Tammy Blackburn are right now. So, uh, you know, I'll stop there and let you ask any questions. <clears throat> Sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, she's a blessing. <laughs> I'm, I'm mad at a couple things. One, I'm really mad for our lack of emotional discipline today. I asked them when I got in the locker room, did you fight the enemy on the other team or did you fight yourself, your inner demons, or and each other more? And they admitted 70-30 was their number. And I'm mad about that because that's missed opportunities. And that's a lack of self-control and self-discipline. And we need to be better with that. And that's, that's on me. I'm mad because 40 of their points came off of transition, offensive rebounds, and free throw line. And it was everything we prepared for. They know how to do it. We have plenty of talent. We didn't play connected. That's why I'm mad. Because leadership is influence. That's all it is. It's making sure you're going on a journey and you're taking somebody else with you. You are responsible for more than yourself. They influenced each other more than we did. That makes me mad because 
it's not about the end score. It's did you do everything you can do to be an excellent teammate, an elite teammate? And did you make anybody else better? And then could you be counted on to do your job, to execute the scouting report? And there's very few people on our Bruin roster that executed the scouting report. I mean, Emory, you know me. I mean, I've been doing this 29 years. I've only not been to the NCAA tournament four times at three different schools in 29 years. And I'm not saying that out of arrogance. I'm saying that is I know how to give them a plan. Follow the plan. And, you know, they've heard me say this, but I want to say, how's your way working? And they got to come to the end of themselves and say, I choose we. And... I won't choose my feelings. I will choose to be whatever the team needs from me to play my role. I choose we. And we haven't gotten, every time I think, okay, maybe we've gotten to the end of ourselves. But it hasn't happened yet. And they're, they're going to either tell me they're, they're, how they're going to serve their seniors down the stretch. And then, quite frankly, tell me how I'm going to need to coach you in the offseason because you're telling me right now. So if they don't change it, they're not going to like it. Pain of regret, pain of discipline. You can't get around that. This pain isn't very fun. Well, look at the, look at the back and forth, how many times the refs had to, uh, you know, the emotional part of that. It, the, I totally get mad at something that's totally out of their control, and then they don't execute the game plan in the next play. Or, you know, losing control. I mean, Coach Wooden used to talk about it all the time. You can't get your highs get too high and your lows get too low. You have to have emotional discipline so you can be focused in on the moment. And you, if, you're, if you don't have emotional and mental discipline, you can't be locked into a team sport that's trying to do something bigger together than you could accomplish on your own. And as soon as you lose self-control mentally or emotionally, you cannot be that teammate for somebody else. I cannot be that coach for somebody else. And... And what the hardest part for me is that's a habit that if you don't get it now, it's going to hurt you the rest of your life. Like, this is so important to get. And we got to make choices out of our conviction and out of our commitments, not out of our emotions and out of our circumstance. Coach, you're talking about how many NCAA tournaments you, you've been to in your postseason experience and now with only a couple of weeks to go in the regular season. Is there any kind of sense of urgency you're trying to instill in the team saying, hey, this – this is it, last two weeks, this is how we have to get in? Well, I, I'm trying not to do that, the big picture part. I'm, tr I'm trying to be like, I mean, I told him after the Oregon game, you know, I said, when have you played your best basketball? When our backs are against the wall, third quarter against Oregon, or fourth court, third, end of third and fourth against um, uh, Washington State, so on and so forth. I said, well, guess what, guys? Our season, our back's against the wall right now. And I thought we came out well. We came out swinging. Uh, getting the ball to the right people, executing on offense, doing things together. I thought our emotions, our mentality, but when adversity hit, when they went zone and we started turning it over, you know, you, you we, yeah, we made mistakes, they made a run, but there was not a sense of, hey, here's what we got to do, let's be calm, let's make the next right step. And we just never got our cohesion together back. We were, we were just making one-on-one -on -one plays. Now, part of it is their zone forces you to do that a little bit. They forces this chaotic style of play. Um, but the reality is that, you know, we have to take responsibility for, you know, we have to take responsibility for it. So I don't know if I'm bringing, I, I, if you don't sense the urgency now, we got bigger problems. And, you know, and we have to use, I mean, even, even if your backs are against the wall that you have to go, you know, win the tournament, or we've got every single team on our schedule is an NCAA tournament team. The rest of it, I mean, things can change like that. You get, you win your last three and you get, you know, three quad win wins, and then you go in and you get to the finals of the, I mean, all of a sudden it changes. But you have to be playing your best basketball. So you can't miss any opportunity, especially for us who have had zero practice time together. You can't miss opportunities to get better out of the unit. As a unit, we're just a bunch of individual pieces choosing ourselves way too many possessions. And I have wonderful human beings as kids. I'm not, tell, I'm not saying anything about who they are. I love them um, deeply. But we are making choices that are putting each other on islands, and we're selling each other out tactically. So I don't, I don't know. I don't think I should have to have any urgency. 
Um, they need to, you know, I think, I think they know, quite frankly. And I think they're battling, you know, like, this is not what I expected. This is so much harder. Everybody's got a story right now. So what story do you want to write tomorrow? That's all you can control. Yeah. So our story's been hard. Hmm? But as Tammy would say, we can do hard things. And uh, I think Charisma and, and Chantel and I think it was also Izzy all went down with kind of injury scares, just kind of holding your breath, knowing what you've been through this season, seeing those. Well, that is a hard thing. Our trainer's done a really good job staying really level through it all. Um, but it does. Every time something happens, you take a deep breath and you hope something else hasn't gone wrong. But um, Izzy Anstey is tough as nails. I mean, if she, I mean, she's got to be one of the toughest freshmen in the country uh, with all she's been through. And you guys don't even know the half of it. Some of the stuff she's had to do behind the scenes that haven't been, hasn't been basketball oriented um, with her health. And so um, she's tough. I mean, she, you know, I think um, Chantel's is obviously she's battled so much injuries her whole career. You definitely think about that, but I don't think it was serious. Um, and, you know, and Charisma, you know, she, we know she's, you know, battling, um, you know, but seems like she's able to come back. I think any of those things really scare her after what she's been through and how vulnerable she knows she is. Um, so she just got sideswiped a little bit. And so uh, hopefully, I, I obviously don't know everything right now, but it seems to be that. But yes, I mean, I have to fight that even as a leader to say, to not react too much. I mean, uh, to stay, what well, we would say, stay neutral and really just ask myself, okay, what does the team need from me right now? You know, and, uh, and, and don't choose my frustration or my emotions, choose uh, my commitments and, uh, and my principles. And, you know, people ask me all the time, one of the, the, what's the biggest thing Coach Wooden taught me in the 15 years I spent with him? And he, he always talked about how when I watched him, he never made decisions out of emotion or out of frustration or for himself. It was always about his commitments and his principles. And that's what I just keep going back to over and over again. Uh, a really good glass of wine. Um, you know, I, uh, well, I'll watch film. I mean, I usually spend about three hours on the self-scout. Um, then I'll get up really early and try to finish my our Utah preparation. And then we meet as a staff in the morning for, um, for game planning. And then we'll do pretty much a walkthrough um, with the team and study film. And then we'll go from there. Um, you know, and I, there's just so many things. I, I want to really give a, a shout out to Don Staley and Joni Taylor um, from Georgia and Don Staley from South Carolina. They're going on um, Brew and Table Talk tomorrow with um, MTAD and, you know, um, what, a, what, I mean, they've got, didn't she just have, or it's coming up, I think, on Monday, game day at South Carolina. They're in the thick of their seasons and the fact that they would take the time during Black History Month to come and, um, and spend time with our players, it just means a lot. And just uh, talk about, you know, having coaches with perspective that know that it's about pouring into young people and making a difference in who they're becoming and who they're impacting, those two coaches get that. Hi, Coach. Uh, you talked about coming out to that pretty decent start offensively. <laughs> it was mainly Amari Thomas. She was five for five. I know we've talked times about her having sort of a lack of aggression sometimes early on, but that wasn't the case yeah. tonight. So I'm curious, talk about her start, but also do you think that's what led to them switching to the zone there in the second quarter? Well, we executed, and Amari doesn't get those catches on her own. You know, we had purpose. We got the ball with the right angle. She sealed well. We passed well. She got quality touches. Um, definitely, I think, yes, Amari, but I thought we were getting good looks all the way around. Um, you know, I thought Izzy was getting good looks, you know, versus their player to player. I, I think she's really growing when you look at her productivity and her in her minutes, both defensively and offensively. I thought she was doing a good job. So I think they weren't able to keep us from getting really high percentage shots and when they were going player to player. And then when they switched to their zone, and we knew that. They hadn't used it as much with us recently, but they, they just really forced it to be a guard game at that point. And they were going to play all those passing lanes, and they were going to challenge our handles, our passing, um, our, you know, our ball handling. Um, and, you know, we, we weren't able to be – their chaos kept us from finding quality catches for some of those players that were really doing well. And we, we really got the ball to the high post and had Imari, and we never faced the basket. Like, we're going to have these situations where we look at the film and we go, but we must have talked about it every time out. And that's when you know that they're not totally locked into what the purpose is together because there was not an adjustment. 
And, you know, I, I always say that, you know, I take a lot of pride. I, I have a Sam uh, on our analytics team always tells me, like, how do we do out of timeouts, defensively and offensively? Uh, what are our out-of-bounds plays efficiently? Are we above 0.1 point or above in possessions? And, and I take that really seriously. And sometimes I think, you know, I need to grow in that. But right there, we just never, like, locked in to, okay, next time I catch the ball, I got to tell myself I got to face the basket. So I think it did lead to that. Um, but we, we have to be able to be stronger fundamentally and, and really burn them. We weren't able to burn them of how aggressive they were being in the passing lanes. And then sort of just to summarize or end things off, you kind of mentioned the uh, Bruin table talk. You know, it's, it's senior night already on Sunday, and you're losing some impactful seniors. It's obviously Black History Month, like you mentioned, and so obviously it's the last thing you want to think about right now after a loss, but I'm just curious just your thoughts on the yeah. efforts of your players. You mentioned through these losses how amazing they are as, as women, and so just yeah. talk about that. Well, I think it's... Um, the mission of our program is to create an uncommon transformational experience for every woman that comes through here to be an elite basketball program. So it's not good enough. We're not a sorority. So we want to be an elite basketball program that teaches, mentors, and equips young women for life beyond UCLA. So right now, we're not an elite basketball team right now. And that's very frustrating to me. But that doesn't excuse me from the second part of our mission, to continue to teach, mentor, and equip for life beyond UCLA. People talk about UCLA is not a four-year decision, it's a 40-year decision. And um, it is important that I not lose perspective on that, that the reality is that um, I, I still want to teach them to be better women, to, um, you guys have heard me say, the only two things that are going to be with them for the rest of their life from these four years, it's not going to be a loss to Colorado, it's going to be who they become and who they impact. And what they have done through more than a dream, MTAD, what they've done through, um, you know, what they did for Tammy tonight, you know, what they, how they did things to serve each other um, through some very difficult times. Those are very important. And it doesn't lower the expectation of being an elite basketball program. We have fallen short, and we need to take ownership, responsibility, and change our behaviors. But it doesn't um, excuse us from living out our mission. And UCLA has asked us to be more than just wins and losses. Coach Wooden has mentored me as such. And I would be um, letting him down if I didn't stay principled-centered in this moment. Thanks, Coach. Thank you, guys.